I can think of few things in life more appealing than the idea of escaping the city, moving to an incredible lifestyle block, and building an amazing home to take advantage of all of this. And today we're about to meet a family who have done just that, and created an amazing lifestyle business by sharing their home on Airbnb. Hey Rachel, how are you? Good, thanks for coming by. It is my pleasure. G'day Greg, great yeah. to meet you mate. You too, thank you. And wow, what an incredible spot you have here. Yeah, we're pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing space. We bought it about three and a half years ago and um, yeah, we came up on a stormy night and camped on the site and we fell in love with the place really. And it's a beautiful area obviously with all the environment around us, but um, a small, amazing community as well. And of course, to take full advantage of this spectacular view, you have built an equally cool and really unique home here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we didn't build it all ourselves, but uh, Greg's done a lot to it since we bought it and um, adding to it all the time. So first of all, what was it that inspired you to move into a house bus? Well, when we were trying to buy this land, we actually bought this before we bought the land and we had some moments along the path and thought, well, what are we going to do with this house bus if this land doesn't come off? But luckily it did all yeah, come off. it all had to tie in together to work. But I mean, getting a house truck was just a way that we could move up here and just go, like just move and go and it and all just, you know, flowed. Absolutely. And now it's not just the two of you living here. You're actually a whole family living in this home. Yeah, we have two boys, six and a half and eight and a half, and um, they love it, yeah. And now, Greg, you work as a builder and handyman around here, and then Rachel, you actually have a, sort of a homeschool operation going here, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, it's sort of recent for me. I was working at an early childhood centre, and then the local mums all sort of wanted me to work from home. So, yeah, it's wonderful. I literally have my neighbour's children come to me, and then we spend some of the time in the truck, which the kids love, and um, the rest of the time at the beach or out in the bush. What a perfect setup. And now in the winter, you live in this home full time, but then in the summer, you rent this out on Airbnb. Yeah, we rent it out for summer and we just go camping around our bush and just do summer camp life. Yeah, we've got a permanent kind of setup and um, it becomes home for four or five months of the year. And it's nice yeah. being on site for Airbnb, yes. For us, sharing our home on Airbnb has been um, a really neat experience. I love how easy it is. I just love it that Airbnb take care of all the business side and then that just leaves us free to look after our guests. It's been uh, really helpful financially for us too. And now what size is the house bus? Uh, it is about 50 square metres um, all up. Uh, the bottom level is 2.4 by 12 metres. And then the top, which is collapsible, is about 15 square meters. And then you really have extended the living space very well with this wonderful deck extension. Yeah, it's a great addition. Um, it's really changed the way we live here. We used to have gravel on the ground only, and we didn't use the space out here as much as we do now. You know, it's got a few interesting features as well with the bars, these two bars hidden underneath here, and then the shutters that come down. And it just creates uh, an additional living space, really. It's set to the same level as the bus, so when you walk in and out, it kind of feels like you're in the same space. Yeah. And, you know, we all come out here and have breakfast, or the kids will go out by themselves and just sit out there and look at the amazing view, and it's a pretty good way to start the day. Yeah. Absolutely. And dual bathtubs, that really is some luxury. It is. It was actually an afterthought. We started building the deck, and um, we thought, well, we should put a bath in, and then... Mm. Maybe two's better than one. <laughs> so that brought some challenges. We had to adapt the design a little bit, but um, it's come up pretty well, actually. Yeah, especially with the fire going at night. It's a real treat. The bubble bath by the fire. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we get incredible night time here. Um, there's no light pollution. It can be quite stunning at night. Mm. What a dream. And are you grid connected with this home? We are. It was a big decision. We weren't sure whether we should do it or not, but um, just with what I do for work, having mains power is an advantage, but I think solar is getting a lot better, but it's working for us at the moment. And then we've got LPG just running um, the Califont and um, the cooker. Um, and then, yeah, water, um, 
comes from friendly neighbours because our catchment's <laughs> quite small. We are going to put a boar into the property. And um, the reason for that is the macadamia orchard over the back here. Right. So we need water for those trees. There's 200 macadamia trees planted. Wow. Another 450 to go, which is a little daunting, but we'll get those <laughs> yeah. in over the next so few months. The next project. <laughs> for sure. So that will give us a permanent water source and be a great addition. Well, the section that you have here really is incredible. I love the look of the bus from the outside and I cannot wait to see what it's like inside. Can we check it out? Sure, let's go and sure. have a look. All right, after you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is just absolutely beautiful. I really love all of the timber in here. Yeah, it is beautifully done. I'm sure it was done by obviously a woodworker. It actually often feels like a boat almost mm. to live in. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's needed a lot of work to get it to where it is now, but um, it's got a lot of good bones and anything that we have changed or taken away, we've tried to reutilize a lot of the timber that was in here and different setups we've reused and set up in different ways. Looking at the way that the house is laid out, I can see why it would work so well as a family home as well. For sure, it's quite deceiving. From the outside, it can look like it would be hard to fit in, but it works really well as a home space. You know, we've got two young boys and we can all be doing our own thing and feel like we're in separate spaces, but then obviously we can come together really easily as well. And the kitchen's a really great size? Yeah, it is. It's surprising, actually. We've had a full family Christmas here and <laughs> uh, managed to be able to prepare everything for everyone and utilise the space really well. So no, it's a great kitchen and it has everything we need. I can see lots of uh, prep area, lots of storage space. Yeah, I mean, as with any tiny home, every inch of space is used and um, there's some clever use of space in here. And um, yeah, we haven't had to change the way we live or eat through living in this space. I love the stained glass windows in the kitchen too. It just lets all this beautiful coloured light into the room. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's part of the character of the place. There's some beautiful stained glass windows that were original and there's some that we've added as well as we've refurbished the place. And I really like the dining table here as well and the way that it's connected not only to the kitchen but also to the lounge as well. Yeah, well, the lounge was actually a bedroom um, when we first got it and it had a big wardrobe at the back and a big old bed and another wall. So that was something that we did quite soon. Yeah, it was an obvious choice. I mean, if we didn't do that, the lounge area would have been right here where we were standing. So now it's created another space that, being split level, feels like a totally different space to the rest of the tiny home. Yeah. And then, of course, the house is wonderfully warmed by this very charming fire here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great little thing. It was a coal range, so it wasn't really ever intended to be used for wood, but obviously we don't want to burn coal, so uh, we use the local timber and it warms up the place really well. Now, living in here as a family of four, obviously storage must be a really big thing for you. Yeah, there's some really clever uses of space here. The step here is a kid's art supplies drawer, and uh, underneath the couch there's three cubbies, and then as well in here, a little linen storage underneath another couch. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like any tiny home, there's no dead space, like every opportunity to create some storage is used. And what do we have down the other end there? So yeah, down here we've got the bathroom and the laundry area. Right. Oh, this is very cute. It really is a compact bathroom, but everything you need in here. Yeah, it's a clever use of the space. It did have a flushing toilet in there when it was a mobile unit, but we've since put in the composting toilet. And then where the basin is, um, is actually above the wheel arch. So again, clever usage because there's no floor space there. And then the little shower and shub unit, which, you know, we've, yeah. for our two boys, it's great. Yeah, when we first moved here three years ago, the boys would still share the shub, so there's plenty of room for us. <laughs> Fantastic. And what's this contraption up in the corner there? So yeah, that's um, part of the system that enables the roof to go up and down. Um, there's a steering wheel up there, which is from the original bus, and you wind that to be able to either raise or lower the roof. So yeah, it's a clever little hidden piece of machinery. It sure is. And then behind us here, we've got your laundry. Yeah, uh, the actual sink size is really helpful as well. 
our brass sink, even though it's really cute, is uh, very small. So sometimes when we have lots of people for dinner, then I'll occasionally use the tub here. And then of course, especially being here as a family, the washing machine is really important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good size washing machine actually for the space. And then further down here, we've got the first of the bedrooms. Yeah, this is my son Harper's room. Oh, this is really cute. Yeah, it's a cute little room, all right? It um, has changed a lot from when we first got it. Pretty much this was the only window in the space when we got it. The interior was extremely tired to the point that we stripped it right back to steel, both inside and outside cladding and rebuilt it from the start, including the floor. Right. Yeah, these windows here really transform the space. I um, picked them up on Trade Me and it's just so nice to bring all the light in. Absolutely. And he's actually got a great amount of space in here. He has, yeah. And, um, you know, we've used things like a divan to use for storage. There's drawers underneath the bed. There was some strange things in here when we got it, including a big water tank that used up a lot of the floor space. We took that out. Um, and also in here, there was some strange shelves, which we've now utilised into a better space that's functional for him. And then his brother's room is above us. Yeah, that's right. Follow me. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, now this is seriously cool. It's sort of like the ultimate bunk bed, eh? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like a tree house too, I think. <laughs> really is. He's got spectacular views from up here. Yeah, when the surf's pumping, he's got the best view for sure. And um, no, it's a great little space. I think I'd enjoy sleeping in here, especially when I was his age. Yeah, I could definitely see how sleeping up here must be a bit of an adventure for him. Yeah, or just getting up here feels like you're getting into a tree house, like Rachel was saying. And we feel really connected to the boys because our room's so close. Um, one thing about this place, which was a little bit unusual when we moved in here, was the fact that it doesn't have any doors going into the bedrooms. And it's surprising how it's worked. Um, I think there's a few parents out there that might think that could be a challenge, but it's been great and we love feeling that connected to them. Yeah, very cool. And then your bedroom is up here. It sure is. Oh, I really like this. Now, this is all actually created from that pop-up part of the bus, right? It is, yeah. It's about four feet above the original roofline of the bus. So, yeah, it's quite unique indeed. Yeah, and it really gives you a very spacious room up here. It does. I mean, it's utilising probably, you know, 60% of the floor space of the bus length. And, um, yeah, it's a real escape from the rest of the house. And this is really unique as well because with the pop-up walls and the canvas sides, it does feel a little bit like a tent up here. Yeah, it does feel like a tent and that's something that we actually love. Um, it makes us feel really connected to the outdoors. Um, we're lucky enough to have a lot of kiwis around here and pretty much every night we'll hear kiwis or more porks and yeah, just feel the elements, which um, I think means for a restful sleep as well. And right now we're in the middle of winter, so how does it work with staying warm up here? Just an extra blanket, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just put on the blankets at night and yeah, I mean, we're cosy. The side walls here are actually insulated. Um, but obviously the canvas ends, which they need to be to be able to collapse, um, don't provide a heap of warmth. But yeah, no, we find it fine. Um, and as Rachel said, an extra blanket or a hot water bottle solves the problem. I think it makes for a really restful sleep. So you've been living here now for three and a half years. How's it all working out? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's been the best move we've ever made. We all love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously it's an incredible place to live uh, just for what's around us, but it's changed our life incredibly from you know, being, I guess, on the property ladder, um, working more traditional full-time jobs, whereas now we've got the balance, I think, a lot better, which is great for the family and great for us as individuals. So living in a tiny home has taught me what's important, and to me that is family, but also the connection to nature with um, that room upstairs and the canvas walls. It really feels like we're really amongst it. I just love the quirkiness of it too. It's so cosy and it's just so different. Yeah, so much character. I love it that our children are going to grow up with the love of this place as well. And what did this cost to build? So the actual bus itself was 78000 um, when we bought it. And obviously we've done substantial work to it since we've bought it. I don't really know exactly what that is and it's an ongoing thing. It's like owning an old bungalow, you know, it's constantly needs work. You know, it gives us an opportunity to add more character to it and make it our own space. And how long have you been hosting now on Airbnb? Uh, we've done two summers so far. And how's Airbnb working out for you? Great, yeah, we're definitely going to do it again this summer and I can see it as ongoing. And so what does the future hold for you both now? 
So yeah, we plan to continue living in here and continue to um, rent it out in the holiday season. And then eventually we'll end up building something of a tiny nature. We're not quite sure what yet. And when we do that, then this will become a permanent Airbnb property. What a great plan. And I really do love that balance that you get to enjoy this as a family home. This is your place to inhabit during the winter, but then you also get to share it with other people and create income from it during the summer season. I just think that's such a great balance. Yeah, it is. It works really well. And we, we're lucky, obviously, to have the space on our land where we can go and stay somewhere else and um, still be on site for Airbnb guests. And as you say, they get to enjoy everything that we do to this place and add to this place. Absolutely. Well, I think what you've created here is just incredible. I love the section. The views are amazing. And this bus is next level cool. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you. My pleasure. What Rachel and Greg have created here really is something very special. This house bus is just so funky, so quirky, and yet really has come together to create an amazing family home. Even better is the way that they're now able to also share this home with Airbnb guests, giving them lifestyle and income to really help them enjoy this incredible place that they call home. I want to say a huge thank you to Airbnb for partnering with us on this video and helping to make what we do possible. If you have an incredible space just like Greg and Rachel that you think you could share on Airbnb and would like to find out more about how you can become a host, make sure you click the link in the description of this video.